thanks a lot, Jesus. He says, don't, um, don't be angry. Don't say raka. Uh, insulting terms. And then don't, don't say fool, you fool. It's a kind of a hatred towards your enemy. Don't do that. If you bring your altar there, recall your brother has anything against you, leave and be reconciled with your brother. It doesn't, Jesus says, just do these things. He doesn't say how, how to do it. How do you stop yourself from being angry? How do you stop yourself from when you're really, really angry, insulting somebody? How do you control your hatred to somebody? He doesn't say, doesn't explain it. Doesn't go into the details. How do you do it? Go to anger management. That would be helpful, right? You go to anger management. They teach you different techniques, techniques or ways to diffuse your anger. Uh, but Jesus doesn't tell you how to do it, how to get to the de details. He leaves that to who? Leaves that to the, you know, maybe to the preachers. They need to go into the details. I wish I could tell you all the management, uh, anger management uh, techniques. I've never been to to it. Certainly, instead of get, letting our anger get to to the boiling point where we hate somebody, where we would even kill somebody, we're supposed to love our neighbor. We're supposed to love our enemies. Look at all these riots that have been happening. People are so angry, they're going and destroying people's property and killing people, beating people up, innocent people. They're letting their anger go crazy. And they're not even trying. They're not even trying to overcome their anger because they're not Christian, maybe, or they don't have any faith. You know, look what happens when you don't have faith. Look what happens when Christianity is just poo pooed and. Uh, driven from society, you have chaos, you have anarchy. Christianity civilizes society and real Christianity, you know, because Christians can be bad sometimes. They don't practice their Christianity. Uh, we need to practice our Christianity. We need to love our neighbor. So if we can turn like anger and insult and hatred to loving our neighbor, that's a big, big change, a big, a big change. We need to be immersed in love for our neighbor, thinking good of them, forgiving them in our heart, in our mind, going to the root, a deep root of the problem of, of you know, ill will and anger towards our neighbor. Of course, there is just anger when all these rioting are happening. We can be justly angry, angry and go out and stop it from happening. Our just anger is, is just, you know. Uh, people need to be corrected. We all need to be corrected at times. And sometimes you don't, get, you don't correct people unless you get a little angry. So that's necessary. It gets us out of our seat and get, makes us do things, do what we need to do to correct the problem. So a little bit of that is important. But we're talking about anger, anger that makes us uncharitable to our, our neighbor. And you get to the root of it by what are we thinking about? How do we think of our neighbor? Are we merciful? Are we you know, seeking out their best interests? Seeking out how can we help them, help them to, you know, overcome their problems, etc. We need to, you know, do that for ourselves so that we don't let anger get out of control. And there's, there's little anger, there's impatience, there's annoyance, and so there's the little things we need to nip it in the bud before it gets saying more and more stronger and stronger and stronger. So, uh, anger management. And you wouldn't go to anger management unless you had charity, unless you loved. And love drive, drives us to correct our passions. And so we need that kind of love that lets us work work on our anger. If you don't have a love, you're not going to work on anything. You're not going to even try. You're not even going to try. So we pray for that uh, that love that helps us to work, but also helps us to reach the perfection perfection of loving our neighbor to even loving our enemies. <laughs> Please, Lord.